So we've looked at a transducer, which was the potentiometer that gave us a voltage value from a corresponding variable resistance. John, can we look at a different device that has some significance that we can then use to control something? Yeah, let's look at the sharp sensor. The sharp sensor is an infrared distance sensor. That means it takes a distance to an object and it will convert it to a voltage. This means if we connect it up to PE2 in our microcontroller, then our software has access. Because it's an A to D, we can get a number which is between 0 and 4095 which represents the distance. In order to understand this, we need to look at the voltage created as a function of distance of this sensor. And this is a very unusual and nonlinear sensor that has this sort of behavior. It's got two phases here. This first phase, where it's really close, and that's less than 100 millimeters, it behaves in this weird way. But after 100 millimeters, it behaves in a very simple way, such that the distance is approximately equal to some constant over the voltage. And so I can use this relationship to write software such that my distance variable, this is now in software, in millimeters, is equal to the some, some calibration constant. I did calibrate it, and so the result I got was 241,814 divided by this ADC value, this number that comes from the ADC. So what we have is a software conversion here, which converts the number 0 to 4,095 which is measured by the A to D, into a distance in millimeters, which goes from, works from about 100 millimeters out to 700 millimeters. So just to recall, the voltage to distance graph here um, is, is nonlinear, whereas for our potentiometer, the voltage to distance, if you think of the potentiometer as measuring distance, then that would be a linear graph. That's correct. And the software doesn't mind dealing with nonlinearity because we can just compensate for it in this equation. That's correct. But what we use it for? Well, we've been, we've been promising that we will build a robot car that can avoid colliding with walls by sensing. So let's put this to work. All right. So the next step in our control system is to look at the blocks. Okay? The parameter we want to control is called a state variable. In our case, it will be the where we are in the road. We're then going to use transducers to estimate what we know and learn where we are in the road. And then we're going to use a control equation, which in our case will be software, and then use these outputs to drive actuators that affect the real world. So this is our world, which is our robot on the road, and we're going to estimate where we are on the road by using the transducer that is our infrared sensor and the A to D converter. And we perform some logic, which is 
the control equation. This is the intelligence part of our code. Yep. And we're actually going to drive two pulse width modulated outputs for the left and right motors. And you notice that a control system has a loop, a feedback loop. And again, the desire is to drive the state variable to a certain set point. All right, let's put the pieces together. All right, let's look at more detail of the state variable. Here's our road, and we're going to have a wall and another wall, and we want to avoid the wall, and we're going to have our robot car here, which is moving in this direction, and we're going to have two sensors on the front of the robot, and we're going to measure the distance between the robot and the left wall and the robot and the right wall. So we'll call this D left. That's the distance to the left wall because we're going this way. And this is the distance to the right wall. And how do you know if we're in the middle of the road? I guess D left should be equal to D right. Yeah, so what we're going to see is we're going to say we are going to look at our error. In other words, we are going to be unhappy if the distance to the left wall is different. So we'll calculate the, the difference to the right wall. And so the goal state is to drive the error to zero. Because if this variable, state variable error, is zero, we're in the middle of the row. So you remember our robot had two wheels. And so what we have is PWM outputs for both wheels. And so for each PWM outputs, for instance, we have the right wheel high over the right wheel high plus right wheel low. And this controls the power to the right motor. In this example, we're going to fix this to 40%. So the right wheel is just going to spin away at 40%. The interesting part will be on the left wheel. On the left wheel, we're going to take the left high and let it change. And again, the pulse width modulated signal for the left wheel is the left high, the time in which the left wheel, the left output is high, plus the time in which the left is low. This pulse width modulation here, this duty cycle is going to vary. We're going to let it vary somewhere between 30% and 50%. So as this varies between 30 or 50%, it's going to be going straight. If it's 40-40, 40-30 will turn one way, 40-50 will turn the other way. So this parameter here is the one I'm going to adjust in my control loop. So let's look at the software flowchart. This is a real-time problem, so we're going to use cystic interrupts to run our control loop. So every periodic time at about a hundred times per second we're going to run this control loop. We're going to measure the distance to the right and the distance to the left. We're going to calculate the error which we saw last time which was the difference between the left and the right. And now comes the fun part. What do we do with it? What I'm going to do with it is I'm going to actually uh, look at the left high and I'm going to adjust it, either spin it faster or slower depending upon the error. And I'm going to do this in a typical control way by using a number. It's, a, it's called the gain of this control system. And I'm going to take the error 
and multiply it times 200 and subtract it off. So if I'm too far to the left, it'll turn right. If I'm too far to the right, it'll turn left. Notice what happens here if the error is equal to zero. What if happens if the error, if I'm in the middle of the road, what does my control system do? So if the error is equal to zero, the left high stays put. It doesn't change. So if we're happy, we'll stay happy. And remember that we've kept the right high at a constant. So that doesn't change either. So now we don't change either of them. We stay the course. So if we're in the middle, we'll just keep being in the middle. There's one more couple of problems we have to deal with is we have to make sure that it doesn't go below 30%. And so if the duty cycle goes below 30%, we will set the duty cycle at 30%, so it doesn't completely stop or try to spin backwards. If it's, if it's okay, then we will continue. So if we look at the duty cycle here of the left wheel, if it is too slow, we'll fix it at too slow. Similarly, if it's too fast, We'll look at the duty cycle. If it is greater than 50%, then we will set the duty cycle at 50%. And these two uh, comparisons will force, will force the range here to between 30 and 50%. Uh, we do have to calculate the other side, the left, um, the left low has to be set so that this number here is a constant and that constant is 80,000 80, minus the left high. And then we return. So these are the steps of my control loop. We sense our inputs. We decide if we're happy. We adjust the actuator output so that we become more happy. In other words, if we're too far to the left, we go right. If we're too far to the right, we go left. And this is a game. In other words, how fast do we turn? In a control system, we want to make sure we don't go crazy. So we'll check and make sure we have a minimum and a maximum value that makes sense for our actuator. And then we perform the output and zoom our robot is spinning.